Indiana Hoosiers. They did lose quite a bit off of last year. Of course, Romeo Langford was the, one of the big stories in the Big Ten at this time last year. He has gone to the NBA along with Jawan Morgan, but they have one of the most highly touted recruits this year in Trace Jackson Davis. Jerome Hunter, a guy they were catch, counting on last season, is back as well. And a couple of the mainstays of that team joining us, Al Durham is here along with Devontae Green. Fellas, welcome. Archie Miller joining me as well. And Coach, a weird year last year for you guys. You started like gangbusters and then things kind of spiraled downhill and, and never able to kind of get it back. How do you process that with these guys? Kind of how do you compartmentalize what happened last year and move forward? I think the thing is with every team and every season, it's always going to be different. You take the positives from one year and you build on it and you take the negatives. And I think a lot of the thing that we talked about in the off season and now moving into this season, especially with two guys like this who have experience under their belt, are there's going to be some bumps in the road. There's going to be some ups and downs. But at the end of the day, you guys have to stay with each other. And I think humility, having the ability to care about one another a little bit more, spend more time worrying about other people and what you can do to make them better rather than yourself. Once you get outside of yourself, good things happen. This is going to be that type of team. We have a lot of guys that can contribute, but we're going to have to stay with it because I think we're a team that's going to have a great schedule in front of us, got a lot of opportunities, but it's a team that can really be good if everyone is contributing. Al, what, what do you take from last year that you feel like you could build on heading into this year? Um, like Coach said, you know, you take the positives from last year, and you just learn from them. You take those bumps and bruises, and you just you get up, and you learn, and you move on to the next year. So we've just been working hard, trying to you know learn from last year, um, and just try to take all the positives away from it. Devontae, where have you seen the biggest growth in this team? The biggest what, sorry? Growth. Um, I mean, I think we just... Uh, we just we got to play together. I think we will play together. And if we're all on the same page doing that, then we'll have a successful season. Adversity was such a big theme last year. And I remember you saying to me at one point, you know, I just wish we were responding better to, to the adversity. You, you hadn't responded well. How do you change that culture? How do you get a team to respond? Because in, in a season this long, this thing goes on for five months. There's going to be adversity. We're all aware of that. How do you get them to, to react to it better? Well, I think, you know, the big thing is, I think your older players, your most experienced guys have to also have a voice in and around those times. They have to have a calming voice. And, you know, Devontae and Al, you know, with me now going on their third year, Devontae's a fourth-year player in the Big Ten. Al going into his third year. Both guys were named captain. They have to have a calming presence on their teammates. They have to make people feel like everything's okay, we're fine. And I think the best teams or anyone you've ever been around always show that um, sort of poise when things aren't going how they're supposed to. The best always seem to resurface and show uh, what they're capable of, so to speak, because they don't get too flustered. And I think that's a big thing. You can't really get too high and too low. These guys play on a big stage at Indiana. There's always eyes on them. And I think the big thing is just focusing on the next challenge, the next day, the next opponent, whatever it may be. But again, just keeping it within our ranks and making sure that our guys and our organization with what we're doing are the only thing that matters. Coach mentioned both of you guys being named captain and elected by your teammates, which I always think is significant. Devontae, I'll start with you and then Al, you can follow up. But what does that mean? And, and how do you kind of take that leadership mantle? Uh, I mean, it's an honor. I think that... Um, it means that they, they see us as leaders of the team and now we have to act accordingly and lead with our voice and with our actions. Al, how do you see yourself as a leader? Um, I see myself as, I mean, I want to make sure everyone's in the right position, everybody's learning, everybody's, you know, coming together when we're going through adversity. So I like to, you know, make sure everybody's in place and make sure that everybody's doing well. So just making sure everybody's in check and being the voice outside of coach. One of the things that really stands out to me as I was kind of assessing this team and thinking about what I wanted to ask you today is the different front court pieces that you have this year. It feels like this could be one of the best front courts in the Big Ten. Versatile, lots of different guys that you can manage. So w what's kind of the calculus there in terms of how you can use that to your advantage? Without question, we're going to have to have a stable of front court players that are impacting, you know, our team. You know, it can't be one guy. And I think these guys will be the first to attest. We have a lot of capable guys that can play together at the same time. 
in some cases, uh, you know, are maybe new to, to the team. A guy like Trace or even a Joey Brunk. And guys that have been around the block a little bit, like Duran, who's going into his fourth year. Even a guy like Race, who maybe isn't as familiar with what's going on because he hasn't played as much. But Race has been here for three years, and I think these guys will tell you he can really help us, uh, you know, this season as we get going. You add in Justin Smith, you add in Jerome Hunter, even Demise Anderson. We have a team with size on our front line that's going to be as good or as big as any. We have to get the most out of them by them challenging one another and them being really, really together in terms of understanding how they as a group can impact a game, not just one player. A lot to unpack there because you went through a lot of names. Deron Davis is one that people have known about, was so highly touted coming out of high school, and his body just kind of hasn't cooperated. Where is he health-wise? He's doing fine. I think he's, 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 uh, he's had a good off season where his weight's now back in condition. Um, he's probably dealing with a little bit of a early season bugaboo with a little hamstring or maybe some sore legs like all these guys do at this time. But he's on the mend in terms of having what we hope is a start to his best season since his sophomore year pre-Achilles surgery. So Duran should in, uh, feel good about himself right now as we head towards October and November. He's a big part of what we're doing because I think these guys will tell you He's as good as it is when you throw the ball inside uh, when he's feeling good. He can get not only himself involved, but he can get his teammates involved as well. Interesting addition in Joey Brunk coming over from Butler. What does he bring both in terms of as a player and, and as a leader, guys? Um, Joey, he's a great, great off-the-court presence. You know, he talks to us. He makes sure that everybody's in their place. He always has everyone's back. So off the court, he's great. On the court, he's a hard worker. Works out after and before. And he hits the boys like no one other. So I feel like Joey brings a great presence to our team. How about from your point of view, Devontae? I mean, he's new to our team, but he isn't new to college basketball or college at that. So he's been there before. He knows how to lead by example and with his voice. So he's been uh, he's a good addition to our team. A lot of excitement about Trace Jackson Davis, maybe the most highly recruited player coming into the Big Ten. Give us a sense for the role that you see him playing. You were through this last year with Romeo where the expectations are, are really high. How, how do you fit him in? Well, I think Trace um, has done a fantastic job of coming to campus ready to work. He's shown a great capability here early to not really uh, feel his way through. He's jumped two feet in from the weight room to the individual workouts to our team workouts, you move into conditioning. He really has been above and beyond the call of duty a little bit. And I'd even add Armand Franklin into that as well as a true freshman. Both those guys, I think, in terms of a five or six week progression as we started school, have done a great job of blending in and not really standing out and saying, boy, he's a young guy, he's got a lot to learn. They learn quick, they go hard, and they're working extremely well towards fitting into what we're doing. But when it comes to making an impact, Trace is great, great talent. As he learns the game, he gets bigger and stronger, more seasoned, more experienced. You know, he has a chance to be one of the best players in the country. And I would add Armand in that. As a young freshman, I think he has the chance to really impact our team as well. And I'm thankful that both of those guys are ready to go because we're going to need them. It's funny, you know, last year there was so much hype around Romeo, who of course had a, a tremendous season, ends up a, as a high NBA draft pick. Not as much buzz, at least nationally, about Rob Finnessy, and yet early on, man, he gave you such a shot in the arm, and then of course his injury problems, I think really was part of, of what derailed you guys. How do you get Rob to take the next step, to be not just kind of a, a floor leader, but someone who can really score for you? But you get that first year under your belt, these guys will tell you it's the best feeling in the world coming into that second year not having to learn everything. So he's ahead of the game like most returners are in terms of understanding the expectation. I think the thing that Rob's doing a pretty good job of right now is not being quiet. You know, as a floor general, as a point guard, as a guy that's played, you got to hear him. He's much more vocal now than he's been, not just on the court, but whether that's in the locker room, the weight room, so that's going to be important. But without question, Rob brings an element of sturdiness, stability, and when he's right physically, uh, I thought last year early on he's one of the better freshmen in the country. Yes, he had his injury. I thought he responded and came back late in the year and gave us a boost. But as we start here in his sophomore year or here early, I think he's ready to take over where he was before. A lot of different pieces that we've talked about here some of it unproven. And so then the question becomes, Aljamie, how do you put this all together and be an NCAA tournament team? Because that's the expectation of Indiana. What do you think needs to happen? You take it day by day. You take it step by step and you just come in and work. We come in, do everything that coach asks us and follow the game plan. And I feel like he'll lead us in the right way. 
How about from your point of view, Devontae? I think if everybody uh, plays their role the best of their ability, then and we all do that as a team, then we'll be successful. Devontae Green, Algernon Durham, Archie Miller, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Dave. Really appreciate it.